So, um, which page is that, Tony? Six? Okay. Seven. Good. So, you want me to pick? Okay, very good. Um, yeah, what about 38? It's like a puzzle. Once you see it, you cannot unsee it. Good. Where do we start? Can anyone dictate? Ln, natural log, very good, of x to the fourth, the square root of x squared plus 3. Excellent. Minus ln, natural log, of exactly. Perfect. I want to draw your attention before we continue. It's not done. I want to draw your attention here too for, for a second. How many term, how many factors we have in the denominator of this one? Just one. One factor. This is the only factor that ends up having minus in front. How many factors we have at the top? Both of them have positive in front. Okay. How many factors or quantities, if you want, we have in the denominator? One. Only one will have a negative in front. So, keeping that in mind, how many factors we have in the denominator? Just one. How many factors do we have in the numerator? Two. Those coming from the numerator will have positive in front of the log. The one coming from the denominator will have what in front of the log? Excellent. So please notice that. Good. Can anyone dictate the product here? Natural log. x to the fourth plus natural log of the square root of x squared plus 3 minus natural log of x plus 3 to the fifth. Good. Can anyone apply the power rule for all three and tell us what to write? Yes. Natural log x plus. One. Excellent. Natural log x squared plus 3 minus. Excellent. Natural log x plus 3. And this is it. It's completely expanded. Do not get into the trap. You cannot do anything with the sum. You cannot do anything with the sum. Ln of x squared plus 3 cannot be further simplified. Ln of x plus 3 cannot be further simplified. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, let's go back and condense. Um, uh, yes, condense, of course. This was expanding. Let's condense. Uh, problems 41 through 70. On the same page, 501. Okay, I will start with 50 and you choose the next. Uh, log x plus... 7 log y. Question, is this, can I do anything to this log x? There is nothing. Excellent. But what about here? I see a 7 in front. Where does that number come from? From the power of y. Excellent. So this is log x plus log y raised to the seventh power. Awesome. But now going backwards, so let's go back to our properties for a moment. These properties go back and forth. This is this. This is this. Uh, this is this. But this going backwards is this. In the same way... Yes, log x times y to the seventh. Awesome. Exactly. You got the idea. Please choose anything you want from, you want from 41 through 70. And then you'll see what we are doing with this in the next two sections. Um, yes. What, like, um, where did you look at the, the rule? Log applied to a product is the sum of logs. Better? Mm -hmm. Other questions? Okay, 
let's choose um, no, let's choose uh, 65 uh, 66 so you can do 65 uh, one third parentheses log base 4 of X minus log base 4 of Y close the parentheses plus 2 log base 4 of X plus 1 Now you could say, oh, this is difficult. Let's take it slowly, step by step, and then you'll tell me, I'll ask you again if it is difficult. Yes, I have to start in parentheses. Can anyone simplify the parentheses, condense parentheses? Log base 4 of? But if I have minus, it cannot be x, y. Indeed, x over y. Plus, don't write anything just yet. Where does this number come from in front of the log? The power of x plus 1. Excellent. Log base 4 of x plus 1 squared. Very good. Almost there. We have to clean up the 1 third. Once we clean up the 1 third, we have one more step. So I'm asking you again, what does the one-third mean, where it's coming from? Exactly. Awesome. Great job. Log base 4 of the cube root of x over y plus log base 4 of x plus 1 squared. And this is done. One more step. What is the last step here? Of course, log base 4 of what? Exactly. Very good. So x plus 1 squared times the cube root of x over y. And you can put everything in brackets so we know it's multiplied and they are together. Very good, Tiffany. Thank you. Okay, why did we study this? Here's why. We learned that the three properties, the expanding and the condensing, because now we want to be able to, we want to learn how to solve exponential and log equations. And the last section is the same thing with 4.4, but applied in word problems. And that will be the end of chapter 4. OK, exponential and log equations. Let's start with exponential. So here is the simplest possible, I would say, exponential equation. OK. I just said it's exponential, but is it? Maybe it's radical, maybe it's rational. We already know eight different types of equations. Absolute value, a linear, quadratic, polynomial, quadratic in form, radical, rational. Why am I what am I leaving out? There are eight, and I only found seven. What, what, what am I missing? I mentioned radical, uh, linear, quadratic, polynomial, oh, with rational exponents. OK. And this is the next one. What is it? What type of equation is it? It is exponential, because the variable is the exponent. So it's the exponential equation. Good. So two numbers are equal, and they have the same base. Can I have here 5? Because 2 to the 5th will never equal 2 to the 3rd. So then what could x be? And no other. Exactly 3. Only 2 to the 3rd equals 2 to the 3rd. There is no other answer. 
Of course, we can get more sophisticated quickly with these exponential equations. So let's look at, um, let's say, uh, number 20 on 5, 14. 8 raised to 1 minus x equals 4 raised to x plus 2. Before we even look at this equation, I'm going to come back for a moment here. What do we notice? We definitely notice that both sides. Excellent. That's all I needed. Okay, here I see 8 and 4. But if there is a way of presenting 8 and 4 with the same base, then I'll be back to this simple situation in a minute. Is there a way of presenting 8 and 4 with the same base? And the answer is yes. How do I present 8? 2 to the third raised to 1 minus x. How do I present 4 with the same base, actually, with 2, right? There is nothing else. 2 squared raised to x plus 2. One intermediate step is necessary, but then I will be back to this very simple situation. Can anyone refresh our memory on what happens now? I copy the base, and please refresh our memory on what do we do with these exponents. Copy the base. Excellent. 3 minus 3x equals 2, 2x plus 4. No matter how difficult this appeared in the beginning, I am back to the simplest possible situation in which both sides have the same base. Two numbers are equal, and they have the same base. Understand that we are not simplifying the bases. I don't want to see cross out the 2 in the, denom in the base as the base. No, this is not what, what we're doing. We cannot do that. We are saying two numbers are equal, and they have the same base. What has to happen? If that is true, what must be true? Okay, let's go back to the simple example. It's okay. We are not used to this. This is totally new. Two numbers are equal, and they have the same base. What has to happen? The exponents must be the same. Excellent. That's all I wanted to hear. Two numbers are equal, and they have the same base. What has to happen? Say it again, Tony. The exponents must be the same. 3 minus 3x must equal 2x plus 4 indeed. That is the, the answer. Is that clear? Is that clear? We're not there yet. So then, I move 2x to the other side, negative 5x. I move 3 to the other side, and I get 1. So therefore, x equals negative 1 fifth. Any questions? Uh, let's also look at 22 as an example. That's the, that's the question, yeah. When we solve exponential equations, we solve for x. When we solve radical equations, we solve for x. When we solve rational equations, we solve for x. When we solve linear equations, we solve for x. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Good point. Okay, so let's take a look at 22 on the same page. e raised to x plus 4 equals 1 over e to 2x. Okay. There is nothing I can do to the left-hand side. And again, I'm hoping that both sides can be presented with the same base. But the question is, can I present the right-hand side with the same base? And if the answer is yes, which base? Is there a way of writing 1 over e to 2x in any other form as e to a power? Of 
course, excellent. Well done. Of course. E to negative 2x is 1 over e to 2x, indeed. So I'm back to the simple situation. Two numbers are equal, and they have the same base. What must happen? Excellent. Well done. This time, I really don't like that, but let's, try, let's say I'm going to keep the variable on the left. So 4 equals negative 3x, x equals negative 4 thirds. Well, we wish this was easy all the time, but it's not. The next step is way more difficult. I shouldn't say way, but more difficult. Okay, so let's take a look at 38. In which we have 5 raised to x minus 3 equals 137. And no, don't even try here. 5 and 137 will never be a we will never be able to present them with the same base. Impossible. There is no base of 5 raised to any number that gives us 137. 5 raised to what number is 137 is not an integer. So don't even try. So let's connect this concept, the next concept, to the following one. You remember when we solved the square root of x, let's say the cube root of x equals 1. How did we solve this equation? What did we do? And why? What did we do? Didn't we turn the radical into 1 over 3? If you want, yes, that's fine too. But still, what did we do? Next. Perfect. This is the same equation. I completely agree. But what did what we do next? The idea is to eliminate this. Exactly. Both sides too. Why? Why did we raise both sides to the third power? Why? I, I want to raise both sides to the fifth power. How come that we choose we chose three instead of five? I want five. Because three, power 3 and power 1 third are of each other. If I raise both sides to the seventh power or fifth power, I will not be able to clear the 1 third. For the same reason, you said the same, exactly the same reason. So I had to choose the inverse function of the cube root. The inverse function of the cube root is power 3, and it could be as a radical. Excellent. So now we are coming back. Keep this in mind for a moment. And now we're coming back to this. There is no way for this particular equation to be solved in the same way we, we, we solved the previous three. No way. So there must be something else. And that something else is based on the inverse function. Like we did for the cube root, we use the inverse function. I want to find the mechanism. So remember, we apply power 3 to both sides. So here I have to apply something to both sides. I want to apply that something that allows me, to both sides, that allows me to bring x minus 3 in front as a factor. Bring it down so I can solve for x. What will I have to apply this time to both sides? I can't raise to a power. I can't take the square root or the cube root. But there is one specific function that I can apply to both sides. Which function? Which function has that property that we've never seen before that allows the power to go in front as a factor? Very good. We have to apply not the cube root, not the cube, not the square root, not the, anything else, but a natural log or a common log. As long as you are consistent, it doesn't matter. So then x minus 3 is a factor. If you don't put it in parentheses, it's not going to be a factor. Natural log 5 equals natural log 137. I want to caution you on something. Natural log 5 it looks sophisticated, which is just a simple number. Natural log of 137 looks fantastic. It's just a simple number. Do not get confused or 
um, surprise, this is just a plain number. So natural log 5, we're not going to use it. But I just want to show you, it's nothing. It's 1.61. But I have to write it exact, like the square root of 2. I have to write it exact as natural log 5. What about natural log 137? It's just another simple number. I have no idea what it is. But here it is, 4.92. But the exact is natural log 137. The approximation is 4.92. I don't need approximation, so that's why I'm going to keep the numbers as they are. So since I'm solving for x, I will distribute this fantastic number to these two terms, x natural log 5 minus 3 natural log 5 equals natural log 137. Since I'm after x, I will move this term to the other side and then divide everything by natural log 5. So x natural log 5 equals 3 natural log 5 plus natural log 137. And in order to solve for x, I will divide by natural log 5. You cannot, and please do not try to simplify anything. You cannot simplify. And you can say, now, show me. You performed all sorts of calculations. Show me that this number, when I replace it in x, replace x by it, 5 raised to this number minus 3 is 137. I don't believe you. And if you say that, and if you don't, I will still show you. So let's calculate this number with the graphing calculator and punch it in and subtract 3, 5 caret 5, the number minus 3, and see that we get 137. So let's do that. Please remember parentheses around the top and parentheses around the denominator. So parentheses, 3 natural log 5 plus natural log 137 Close, do not forget to pair the parentheses for the top. And divide by natural log 5. For the denominator, it's OK. It's just one term. So apparently, the answer is 6.1, roughly. I don't believe it. I'm going to do this. 5 caret in parentheses, the previous answer minus 3. Close the parentheses. If our answer 6.1, roughly, is correct, when I hit answer, what should I, uh, enter, what should I get? 137. If I don't get 137, all these calculations mean nothing. I have to start from scratch. So let's press enter and see if we get 137. <coughs> Is this clear? Yes. Any questions? That's how we solve exponential equations in which the two sides cannot be presented with the same base. We have to apply the inverse function, and the inverse function is the log. Remember, you cannot apply natural log to one side and log to the other. If you apply log log, common log to both sides, fine, or, or natural log to both sides. Once you are consistent, and this will be the end of exponentials, but I would like to, us to choose other problems. We still have time to choose more problems. And we'll look at uh, log equations. I, I know we only have seven minutes left. So let's uh, not move on to log equations uh, today. Just let's practice uh, more exponential equations. Is that OK with you? Yes, please, Steve. Yes. No, you go. Uh, uh, give me the numbers for both. I'll take 66, please. 66. Mana? Uh, are we going to do like another one like this? Are we going to do it? Say it again. Are we going to use like another example? Of what we did? Yes, from uh, exponential functions in which we have to uh, left and right. Uh, yeah, so this was, can anyone remind me? Okay, so this was 6.06. .06. So this is x approximately. Okay, so we want to look at 66. It's a perfect example, but that 66 is log. So we have, I have not shown any log equation. That's why I was saying, let's do log and the um, uh, war problems on Wednesday. So let's still choose from 23 through 48. 23 through 48 for the exponentials. I mean, I can show 66, but I want to build, yeah. OK, let's uh, continue with 34. So please choose another one, Steve. 
So I'll do third. Please. Which one? 46. Please. 46 is perfect. Good. So 34 first because I started and then we'll look at 46. Uh, 1 minus um, 8x equals 7957. Okay. The left hand side is E, base E. The right hand side is that wonderful number 7957. There is no way I can present both sides with the same base. What is my next step? It's completely cleaned up. I cannot simplify or divide or do anything. Exactly. Natural log. Remember the power becomes a factor in front. If you forget parentheses, it's not going to be a factor. You're only multiplying by 8x. Equals natural log 7957. The next step, before we continue, I would like us to discover what natural log E is. Equal to. So what is the base here? I don't see any base. What is the base? For natural log. Base e. E raised to which power is E? E from the base raised to which number is E? E raised to which number is E? Exactly. So please remember, note, natural log E is 1, not log E. Log E is not 1, but natural log E is 1. What about log 10? What is the base here? Raised to which power is 10? Exactly. So natural log E, what conclusion do we draw here? Log base A of A will always be 1. A raised to 1 is A. E raised to 1 is E. 10 raised to 1 is 10. So every time you apply log to the base of the log, you will always get 1. Okay, so then, coming back to our problem, this will be replaced by 1. Excellent. So then I have 1 minus 8x equals natural log 7957. I'm solving for x. What should I do first? Getting closer to finding x. Don't get... Any thoughts about this? It's just a poor number. How will I solve this for x? Subtract 1 and divide by? Negative, negative 8. Negative. Exactly. Exactly. Negative 8 equals negative 1 plus natural log 7957. And then x equals 1 over 8 plus, uh, I have to change this to minus, I'm sorry. Minus 8 natural log 7957. But this is minus. I divide it term by term by negative 8. you want to check you can I only have two minutes so please check that and let me know if you got the correct and uh, because I have 46 okay 46 in 46 e to 4x minus 3 e to 2x minus 18 equals 0 this is a perfect example and it will refresh our, me our memory on something from our past uh, not that past, not that far back, but about a month and a half back. So if I denote this by t, it will work only this if this is t squared in b, and it is. If you square, if I square e to 2x, I copy the base and multiply the exponents. So this is quadratic in form. t squared minus 3t minus 18 equals 0. How do I factor this? Not difficult, because the leading coefficient is 1. t minus 
6 and t plus 3. And we have two options. However, the equation is in x. So I have from here e to the x equals 6, and from here e to the x equals negative 3. We will do this problem one more time because I rushed through because it's 15. This has no solutions. How come? No, exactly. This is the this is the graph of e to the x, and this is negative three here. They don't intersect. But this has to we have to apply natural log. So x equals natural log six is the only solution coming from here. It's okay. We'll do this problem one more time. I just didn't want to hold you over. Thank you. Any questions, please?